I'm here to talk about school vegetable gardens and why I've spent more than 10 years spreading them in Delaware. I started the nonprofit Healthy Foods for Healthy Kids with a pilot school in Wilmington, and we now have 26 school vegetable gardening programs, most of which are in public schools. And I, thank you. And I just want to share with you why I am compelled to do this work. I think vegetables are the key to life. And the roots of this idea came from my own roots. So I grew up in a Greek family where food and cooking brought us together in the best possible way. And though not usually vegetarians, Greek people cook and eat a tremendous amount of vegetables. So we ate every imaginable type of vegetable, often co covered with olive oil and lemon juice. And sometimes we made spanakopita, which you may know as Greek spinach pie. But we didn't just make spinach pies. We made squash pies. We made leek pies. We made all kinds of pies filled with wonderful vegetables. So as kids, no one ever had to tell us to eat our vegetables because they were a key part of our meals and they were truly delicious. Now, as a kid, I would have liked to grow vegetables, but we grew up living in apartments in the Detroit and Chicago areas. So I didn't have an opportunity to grow food until I was in my 20s. And I was idealistic. I wanted to eradicate world hunger. So I went to, yeah, just, I went to Colorado to pursue a master's degree in agronomy, which is the science of growing crops. And in that process, I got to grow my first vegetable garden. And I was thrilled when I got to do this for a couple of reasons. One was the incredible freshness of the vegetables from my garden made cooking a pleasure and made everything taste so much better. And second, when I was harvesting these vegetables from my garden, I was just amazed by the fact that they looked just like the ones that came from the grocery store. Because as every city kid knows, the grocery store is where food comes from. So I felt like having that thrill of putting seeds in the ground and being able to grow these perfect vegetables was an experience that everyone should get to have. But then I went on to a career in biology teaching and research, so I didn't think about it much un until I moved to Delaware where, shockingly, I found out that not everybody loves vegetables. And this may be reflected in our statistics. So we are ranked 32nd in the nation for overall health. More than 30% of us are obese, so that's not really exactly stellar. So what, what can we do about that? Are fad diets the answer? I don't think so. I think we need true prevention. We need to vegetate the first state, and we need to start with kids. But before I go on to talk about kids and gardens, I want to explain why I think vegetables are the key to life. So when I was a professor, I studied toma tomato genes. But other folks in the scientific community were studying the chemical components of plants and their effects on the human body. And from their research, I came to the conclusion that one of the best ways to improve diet and health is simply to eat more vegetables as part of a balanced diet. So as I'm saying this, I'm sure some of you are thinking, yeah, I don't think so. I don't think I want to do that. And others of you might be thinking, but I can get all the vitamins and minerals I need um, in the other food groups, or I can eat whatever I want and just take a vitamin pill. And it's true, from a pill, you can get the vitamins and minerals we know about. What you won't get from that pill are what we call the phytonutrients. So these are found only in plant-based foods, mostly in fruits and vegetables, and some only in vegetables. Now there are thousands of phytonutrients, and we know that they're important for optimal health. What we don't know is which ones are the most important, how much is needed, and we don't even know whether or not they need one another in, in order to be effective. 
Nonetheless, we always do want to reduce things down to that simple pill. But that can lead us into trouble. So for example, you may have heard of the phytonutrient lycopene, which gives tomatoes their red color. And tomatoes have been associated with the prevention of a host of chronic illnesses, including heart disease and cancer. But when we try to give people lycopene in a pill, it just doesn't seem to work. And that kind of result, if you're relying on the media for your dietary information, that kind of result can be really frustrating because then it seems like, you know, that it, the dietary advice is just changing day to day. So here's some dietary advice that will never change. Eat a variety of vegetables. Vegetables will always be a cornerstone of a good diet. So, even though I loved my life in science, I kept coming back to this idea of school gardens. So why school gardens? Well, one reason is, is that you, using food as a unifying concept for teaching is really compelling because everybody's got to eat to live. And so most of us have this emotional relationship with food. But if we just talk about food as nutrition, that can kill that emotional magic. So if we tell kids to eat something because it's good for them, that is very likely to backfire. And what I know from my work in the school gardens and the published studies is that kids will eat the vegetables they grow. And recently, there was a very exciting finding from a meta-analysis of all school garden research, and it was this. Experience in a school garden has a greater impact on increasing kids' vegetable consumption than nutrition education does. So I just want to share with you one example of what we've seen. So this is Ian. And Ian's class planted radishes in his first school garden. And he got to taste those radishes in the school cafeteria. And he discovered he loved them. And you won't believe this, but his mom told me she asked him what he wanted as a reward for being chosen student of the month. And he said, radishes. <laughs> And here he is with some that he grew in his home garden. So we know that gardens have an impact, but are they practical? And I want to touch on this for a minute because when I started this project, I heard a lot of can'ts. You can't do school gardens in Delaware because there's no summer school in Delaware, and you can't do school gardens unless you grow during the summer. So here is the key to our program. We grow only during the school year. We have two seed-to-table growing seasons, one in the spring and one in the fall. And we use fast-growing, cool-weather crops that are, that are ready in about six to eight weeks. The other thing that we do is we design our lessons to support the state science curriculum. So they really help teachers by providing these hands-on learning experiences. And students learn so much better when they're doing. So I'd like to share with you my vision for Delaware. That is that every student has the opportunity to experience the joy of growing and eating garden fresh vegetables. That every school has a vegetable garden where teachers can bring learning to life. And the outcome of this will be a healthier population, not because we told kids to eat their vegetables, but because they discovered for themselves that vegetables can be delicious. Thank you. <laughs>